Okay, back again. I'm gonna make a little adjustment here if I can. All right. Need these. Well, this will be part three. And this is the Metaphysical Christ by Cryon. And again, this is in the first Cryon book called The End Times. Um, it might not make sense to a logical human mind that we actually decided to come to Earth to go through a life of potential, suffering, and hardship. But the mind of God, us when we are not here, is in the parentheses. It is as it should be, and we came in love to go through something that will help all of us. Make no mistake, however, that while we are here, metaphysicians also believe we can manifest anything we choose through the power we inherently have as a part of God when we get here. And that can be found in John chapter 1, verse 12 again. It's back to the lessons, and all people on earth can plug, can plug in to the power anytime they are ready. All this leads to questions of possible past lives, karmic group involvements, predestination, and all the other extra topics that have been associated with the metaphysician, perhaps out of proportion to the real intent of the belief. These extra things are not doctrine. They, I'm sorry, I was eating candy before I started recording. <laughs> they are important to the individual to the degree the individual feels that they apply and how they directly relate to what the individual should do with the information in order to help himself. Most metaphysical people, however, end up believing that they indeed were on earth or somewhere else in the universe many times. And that this early life, like each of the others, which continue to be veiled while they occur, are lessons or tests with a purpose of the eventual elevation of all humanity to a level of enlightenment that will be very godlike in itself, similar to the description found in Revelations 21 in the Holy Bible of the new heaven and earth, where at the end of earthly time, we will have the final marriage of the Lamb. The Lamb refers to Jesus as the sacrifice and love that God made in sending him to earth to suffer at the hands of men. This marriage to the metaphysician is the graduation from the lessons, the final chapter, and the time where those with enlightened minds actually will have the veil removed while on earth. And yes, they will meet Jesus again and all will recognize each other. Others not ready will be removed. This is the source of the dark parts of Revelation. There will be a battle to be fought, but not of the sort you might expect. Many will die, however, again in the plan that we have all agreed on, its, on in advance. Metaphysicians believe that at the cellular level, a way of saying in our hearts, we know everything that has ever happened to us since the beginning of time as we understand it. Number two, the metaphysical system embraces all of humanity and sees it as one homogenous group in real time. Instead of seeing humanity in terms of groups of humans for harvest or lost individuals to pray for or to send missionaries to, etc. A real time arena provides for interaction right now. That is, what happens in China today affects the spiritual aspects of all humanity today, including the hot dog vendor in New York or the Pope. If the time is right and enough people pray together, unbelievable events can take place, such as the almost overnight removal of the wall in Berlin, or dramatic changes in Russia, or peace in South America or the Middle East. These events are universal, driven events, not based in one religion, but they are responsive to the working of universal mechanics, such as prayer, or meditation is in parentheses, and love, present and practiced among many religions. They are also proof that we are closing in on our goal for a unified earth. Number three. 
Metaphysics makes no person or group of persons wrong. It is a way of relating to God in the universe, not a set of rules for salvation. It is very personal. Membership in a group is not necessary. In the competitive first world, this is a difficult concept to understand. An example would be if you were in a school of many different grade levels, all studying in a parallel fashion for the same diploma. Certain individuals might want unique elective courses or difficulty levels to accomplish the same education. Some of the other grades might be competitive or closed, but all going toward the same goal. Students would select the grade level and course that fits their needs for the moment or that puts them with others of their culture or like mind. Graduation would be terrific with everyone gathering for a common celebration at the very end, all celebrating in love and harmony at the task accomplished. The metaphysical grade level's signature is that they would help cheer the others toward their goal instead of insisting that their metaphysical grade was best or that theirs was the only correct path. In other words, it is one of the only systems that acknowledges that all the other systems have a right to exist and are correct in context with what many people must go through for their time on earth. Number four. Metaphysicians believe that the mechanics of meditation, prayer, and love are universal and work no matter who you are. That's why most of the other spiritual belief systems of the world regularly hook in to so many of the benefits of their works. Such an instant, positive results from prayer as well as remarkable healing and success, many miracles are seen daily in the third world, unreported and unknown to the first world. Through a regular practice of prayer and meditation, holy men are alive today that are helping people to see the power in themselves, their meetings regularly resulting in dozens of healings. Number five, because of number three and four above, metaphysics is not evangelical. It is one of the only systems on earth that is not. If you are ready for it, then you will embrace it. If you are not, then you will not. Naturally, there is the idea that those who embrace it are more enlightened than those who do not. But this is a human judgment and tells you a great deal about humans, not God. Metaphysicians believe in spreading the news, but not converting anyone with it. Number six. Finally, and most painfully to most Christians, is the obvious fact that metaphysicians do not consider Jesus to be God any more than you or I. They do not worship him as God, and they do not believe that Jesus wanted them to. They do believe that Jesus was perhaps closer to God or pure love than any other entity in existence in the universe, and that he his visit to earth was monumental and critical for humanity. He was of the very highest enlightened level that ever was, and he came to teach us during a time when it was absolutely necessary for that part of civilization, and he came with full knowledge that he would suffer painfully at the end of his tenure. It was a collective decision to send him, and a painful one. Did he do all of the reported miracles? Yes. Did he come back from the dead? He certainly had the power. Was he the son of God? In as much as we can understand what that means. Yes. We cannot know, this is in parentheses, we cannot know the mind of God any more than we can explain the workings of the internal combustion engine to an anteater. <laughs> there are things that are simply beyond our ability to know while we are here. End of parenthesis. When God wished to make known the emotional feelings of just how important and special Jesus was to the whole, the reference to the relationship of a human-born child was used as the closest thing that humans could relate to. There simply is nothing more special to humans than their offspring. Jesus exemplified the absolute power and love of God available to everyone. It is also possible that he might have visited other worlds as well. Just think of this possibility, this 
spec speculation alone should heighten a person's love and admiration for this very special being we call Jesus. Why was he a man? Since he had to be one sex or the other to come as a human, it was more acceptable for the culture of that time for Jesus to appear as a male. God knew it would be easier for him to teach and be listened to by the elders. As to obvious masculine references of God and Son of God and Son of Man, these were also genderized by the writers of the time, probably without much thought. To conform to the conceptions of acceptable power and authority, is God male? No. Do the clouds have sex organs? Is the air we breathe male? God is spirit, generic, and universal. Our reference to female and male is relative only to our time on earth. For these reasons, many metaphysicians refer to God as mother, father, God, or just spirit. Now is an age where women and men are finally coming together and recognizing, perhaps for the first time, that they share a common spirituality that has no specific gender domination. This is also the time for the emergence of a known, but not necessarily first world concept, of bonding for couples on the highest level possible, that of the spiritual first, God, love, then of human love, then the physical. Metaphysicians also believe that a great deal of the Bible was interpreted and translated by men for men's purposes, and that there were even parts left out on purpose. This will be proven on earth eventually, but not necessarily accepted by Christians. Metaphysicians don't believe in the devil in the classic sense. Hell and eternal damnation do not play a traditional part in the belief either. See the unseen on page 140, it says in parentheses. This point out, they point out that before Christianity became known as we know it today, it passed through a time when powerful governments controlled it and manipulated it and used it even for war. The power seats were most often the religious leaders and they were often corrupt. Scriptures were omitted, edited, and translated in ways that helped control people. And those very areas are still read and followed today. You can't get into a Bible thumping ah, contest with a metaphysician. They simply do not believe the Bible is totally accurate. And therefore, what is sacred and authoritative to one person cannot be used to qualify or prove a point to the other. It becomes a spitting contest and no one wins. Metaphysicians use the Bible as a reference to many general truths as spoken by Jesus, and they believe that in its original condition it was channeled, given by God through humans, all of it, not just the parts you have seen. Hmm. In, and, and I would say in its original condition. That means something quite different. Metaphysicians rely on meditation. Meditation is simply prayer while listening instead of speaking and nothing more. Oh, that's, that's very nice. It isn't spooky or strange, and it isn't necessary to be in the lotus position or hum strange <laughs> noises while you do it. Meditation is where you receive power, intuitive information, and direction. Metaphysicians also believe very strongly in prayer, speaking, worship, and dialogue, used basically for helping others. They believe spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the voice of the collective God, and that it is just as powerful today as ever, and it will be, and it will provide good information as it is supposed to be provided. It is ongoing and did not stop with the prophets 2,000 years ago. The Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost is replaced with the concept of equal power for all, not just a three-way split. Uh, we're at 14 minutes, I think. Let's see how far this goes. Hmm. This continues on pretty good, so I'm going to stop it here and I'll start another one.